Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're well. So today you join me in this Mini. It's not mine. And I'm driving to Mini to go and pick up my own Mini. So as you know, I've been repairing my own Mini Countryman Cooper S Hybrid. It's actually been repaired for a few weeks now. I've done some mileage in it and the service light popped up and I thought since it's its first service, it was worth splashing out that little bit extra and actually getting it serviced at Mini or BMW, the Mini dealership. And they've had it today, they've been servicing it and they've hopefully inspected it. So let's get there and then we'll have a closer look at the car. there we have it back in my own mini it's been inspected and really they only found a couple of things which i'll talk about in a minute when i pull over to discuss costs um there were actually a couple of little bits that i, I didn't even see at the back Please of the car the roundabout at the second exit towards road a uh, main road. let's put her on mute so if you've been following this series you'll know that this is the cheapest mini because when i bought it um i didn't go to mini and buy their very expensive Mini at 32, 33,000 pounds. What I did was I went onto Copart and I bidded on a Category S right off non-runner Mini. Yeah, I like to take some risks. Um, but anyway, it's, it's all worked out. I'm really happy with how the car looks and in general, you know, the whole process and how it's worked out for me. So as I said earlier, I did buy this as a non-runner and it was a calculated risk. Uh, basically, my thinking was you buy a car that's damaged, the airbags have gone off, and in most modern cars, it triggers either a fuse or um, a, a switch sometimes that you can just press. And therefore, you know, it's a safety mechanism. It saves the car from further damage. So I have fallen foul of that once. There was one car that I bought that did need engine work. Normally, it's just it needs a pipe, need, needed a pyro fuse, and that's exactly what this car needed. So that was a cheap fix. I think it was about £160. Um, I got that the first day the car arrived and got it running pretty much instantly. So that was a big worry off my mind. So in terms of the actual damage that this car had, it was damaged at the front end. So it had a, the bumper was missing. So the, the fog lights were missing. It had damaged the front passenger side headlights. Uh, the bonnet was damaged and all of the radiators and things like that, they were all damaged the front slam panel was damaged so that was the damage now let's take a closer look at the finished article Really pleased with how this car's turned out. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree. Will you agree? Comment below and let me know what you think. The first big question that I want to cover on this video is what did this cost? What what was the total cost of putting this car on the road? And did I hit my target of getting it back on the road for half price? So let me just find somewhere to pull over and I'm going to go through the notes with you. So I've been keeping track of all the costs on my phone, so let's run through that now. So the car cost £10,653, that was after all the fees and after VAT and everything else. As I said on the earlier video when I was building the car up, um, I bought a full front end even though I didn't need a full complete front end, but it was just a lot easier to do it that way. So that came to £3,500 for all the bits that you can see in the picture. Uh, the fuel to collect that, so obviously I had to take a big vehicle and I had to do a couple of trips and the fuel actually cost me £150 to go and pick that up. Pyro fuse was £160, brake hose was 42 the coolant and the gear oil was 80 air pressure sensor that I needed was £37, gearbox thermostat was £55, I got that off eBay second hand but it's off a fairly new car. The airbag kit was £960 and I'm going to come back to the airbag kit because that was one of the areas that I had a bit of hassle but it was £960. Uh, the rear seat belt which wasn't part of the kit was £70. 
Um, the under tray, the front under tray was 86. Windscreen was very cheap at 150 pounds. Aircon, 130 pounds to refill that. It cost 750 pounds to paint. Again, that's a topic I'm gonna to cover in a minute. That whole total, so before I get to the total, I want to take away all the extra parts I didn't need and I actually sold, I've sold a lot of those. So in total, I've, I've claimed back about a thousand pounds on those original parts that I paid 3,500 for. So I'm gonna knock a thousand pound off the total. So the total, the grand total comes to 16,073 pounds. So the BMW inspection uncovered, as you can see in this video here, um, the, on, on the rear control arms, there's two under trays, an under tray on each rear control arm, and they are both damaged, so I need to get those replaced. Obviously, they've got nothing to do with the actual accident itself. It's probably more likely when Copart moved the car around their facility and they've damaged the bits of under tray. I've already replaced the front under tray. I think I've just mentioned the cost for that. That was £86, but I didn't realise I needed rear ones as well, so I'm going to replace the rear ones. I don't know what they cost yet, new, but on eBay, there's a pair of them for £60. So that's the cost, let's get back on the road. So £16,000, in addition to that, uh, <laughs> I've just paid £315 to have its first service. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous as far as an oil change goes, that is all it had in the first service. Obviously they inspected it, I knew what I was letting myself in for, and with it being a new car and its first service, I thought, just let, BMW see it or let Mini see it, get the stamp in the book, job done. The next service is due in two years time. Um, I'll probably just service it myself for, I would imagine less than about 80 pounds. So 16,000 pounds, 16,000 pounds. I mean, that sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money. Um, I, I didn't realize I'd be spending that much when I actually took this project on, but I have met my target of getting it for half price or there or thereabouts. And actually, I think when you think about it, this is a lot of car for £16,000. It's, it's modern, it's hybrid, it's so comfortable. It's got all of the nice features, you know, it's got a big sat nav, really comfy leather seats, LED lights, union jacks, really fancy styling all the way around. Uh, personally, I really like the look of this car. And now that I've driven it, it's actually very nice to drive as well. I mean, it's not necessarily a sporty car, but it does have a bit of a sporty drive. But at the same time, these leather seats are actually really comfortable. That lone car that I was just driving back when I went to Mini to pick this up, that was a sport version and that didn't have the hybrid motor. It had the same engine and it felt really underpowered, whereas this feels really sprightly. So before this turns into a review, one thing that I want to call out, which I'm a little bit disappointed about with this car, is that new, this was just under £40,000. And for a £40,000 car, it doesn't have climate control. It has aircon and it's brilliant, it works. I've had it regassed. But in answer to the question, do I think it was worth it? I think it genuinely is worth it. And if I was selling it now, I think I'd probably be asking around £20,000 for it. Next up, it's time. I mean, how long did it take to put this car back on the road? So I'm going to give you two answers to this. So in terms of effort, um, I think I worked out that I spent around six days just by myself, you know, the effort that I put in repairing the car. That includes doing some research, finding some parts, finding part numbers, ordering stuff online, driving down a couple of days to buy some parts. As I said earlier, that had the issues with the airbags. Um, so all of those things, about six days of actual effort. Now, this is where the issue is coming. This is why it took a lot longer to actually repair this car than what I thought. So I ordered the airbag kit from a very well-known company that only supplies airbags, apparently. And it was 960 pounds, as I said earlier. It took four weeks for them to deliver a, what looked like just a dashboard that was just thrown into a box. So surprise, surprise, it was damaged. And they just offered me something like 50 pound off, which was just ridiculous. So in the end, what I had to do was I drove down, which again, this is part of the, one of the six days. I took the time out. I think it was about 120 mile round trip. I drove down to give them their damaged airbag, the dashboard that they sent me, and I swapped it for a not damaged one. And it took them about two or three weeks, um, you know, so that they could get ready to source the second dashboard. So yeah, that was a delay in total. 
I spent six weeks waiting for a dashboard and that was quite painful, especially when you consider it was nearly a thousand pound. I paid for delivery and I actually had to go drive down and pick the part up myself anyway. So that was really crap service, but it is what it is. And you know, I'm not really trying to have a rant and I'm not letting it have a downer or put a downer on the whole situation of getting this car back on the road. So the other thing that I wanted to just talk to you about is the paintwork and how long that took. Now, uh, there's a garage that I use all the time. I've used him literally for years. Um, I've lost count of how many cars he's repaired for me. He's a very nice guy, very nice body shop. But unfortunately they had some issues and the car sat at the body shop and the communication could have been better but the car sat at the body shop for four weeks and in the end i gave up on that route because i just wanted to get it back on the road um, then i took it to another body shop that was recommended never been there before and the guy that runs the place said to me that he had i think he said 42 years of experience working in the paint or body shop industry so I was quite confident that I'm going to get a really good job here. I want to be in that lane. Anyway, it turns out this 46 or 42 years of experience was just a complete joke. I don't know what he's been doing for 42 or 46 years. But it took him three attempts to repair the car to a standard that I was happy with. And considering it cost £750 just to repair or paint the paint, the bonnet and the bumper and the hinges. £750 is a lot more than what I thought it would cost. And then I thought I was going to get a brilliant job at £750. The expectation was high. He set the expectation and he, and he set it quite high. But it turns out the first time I got it back, um, the car was, the bonnet was two different colours. Then the second time I got it back, he'd missed off a little bit on the bumper. So then the third time, which was about two weeks after, I dropped it off and I really didn't want to see the car again until it was complete. And then I, get, I got it back about a week later and I would say I'm 99% happy with it. It's, I mean, BMW have just inspected it and they didn't comment on the paint. That whole process of getting the car painted took eight weeks, eight weeks to get the car painted, six weeks, to get some airbags. In between that, it was six days of actual effort. And I think I spent about maybe eight days learning Premiere Pro to and YouTube and trying to edit these videos. So I actually spent longer editing the videos than I did repairing this car. So it wasn't my intention to have this rant and I hope it doesn't come across as a rant, but it's really, I wanted to share the experience that things are not straightforward. Some things are just outside of your control. So over the next few weeks, I'm actually having a new garage built and in there, my plan is to buy some decent paint equipment and slowly I'm going to learn how to paint. So for me, part of getting these cars repaired is about learning and just learning new things about cars in terms of mechanics, but also learning new skills. And in this case, I really want to learn how to paint a car myself. And that means I'm not having to rely on people that ultimately are going to let me down. So sorry if that's a bit negative, but that's it let's get back to the positives so in summary i'm really pleased with how this car's turned out the car's brilliant it's worked out really well the new owner is very happy with it i'm going to go over and this is the last time i'm probably going to drive this car it's had its service it's had its inspection i'm going to hand it over so i really hope you'll hit the subscribe and like buttons if you've enjoyed this content i have enjoyed putting these videos together for you guys and sharing them and sharing the whole journey i have got a list of projects I'm going to work on very soon. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to learn how to paint. I've got already got a car that I'm going to paint. I've got another couple of cars I want to review and one of those I'm going to repair. So I've got a number of projects in the pipeline. I'm going to try and make these uploads more of a regular occurrence, but I hope you've really enjoyed watching this. I've enjoyed putting them together. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.